Welcome everyone to the officially the first day of the Mushroom Methods Workshop, although we did pick up yesterday with Alison's fantastic book on. Thank you again for, for doing this. It was so much fun and nice introduction to the theme that we're going to be deepening today through a series of presentations by really excellent speakers. We're just so happy to see people have traveled such a long distance to be here. And that you have come from such different disciplines and backgrounds, it's it's really wonderful. So thank you for being here and for and, and for staying with us for the next uh, two days. Uh, I keep my introductory uh, remarks very brief. Uh, my name is Anna Shvoninska. I'm the Department of Anthropology as biodiverse anthropocene research program with one day to this event. So we're very grateful. My co organizers are Agnieszka Bankowska from the University of Helsinki. And Vlad uh, needs no introduction because he <laughs> has been in touch with all the information and all the background that you all been having with you for months now. And at the live and objects. Thank you so much for being here. And we really look forward into this, to, to deepening this mushrooming journey. We really feel like we are having a moment. And our work today is really. To start understanding the nature of this moment. Why are we getting so excited about this overlooked organism? What is it allowing us to think and feel and the way that it allows us to go in our respective disciplines across different disciplines, as well as beyond the academic realm within society? And again, to recall Alison's something yesterday, perhaps the mushroom is not going to save the world, but the people who love mushrooms. May and with this very positive, upbeat message, I'm going to pass on to you. And I'd like to introduce the event. Thank you for being here. Hello, and uh, thank you for coming. There were some things as well. They were not there recently, and yet, much like their ability to appear seemingly overnight, so do have mushrooms seize the public and the academic imaginations. This was not always the case, having been ignored, misclassified, feared, and distrust, distrusted in certain places, in certain cultures, for centuries. Yet now that here they are, burst into daylight, witnessing a flurry of activity around them worldwide. The interest in fungi is everywhere, and it is pervasive. In ecology and conservation, more and more voices are being raised to preserve underground ecosystems and add mushrooms as the third F in global conservation initiatives. Fauna, flora, and fungi. In engineering and design, fungi are being explored as biodegradable, sustainable, and efficient materials for clothing, packaging, buildings, and even computer components. In pharmacology, Fungal extracts are being studied to develop new medicines and new drugs to treat a variety of illnesses, to say nothing about the resurgent interest in psychedelic-assisted therapy. In anthropology and related disciplines, and attention to fungi ties into discussions on global commodity flows, multi-species sociability, and more than human agency. Outside the walls of universities and laboratories, mycological citizen science groups have seen their attendance rapidly increase over the last few years, while popular science books flew off the shelves and TV shows have reached ever newer audiences. It is clear that something is indeed underfoot, and we feel that that something has the potential to challenge traditional understandings of how we conduct our work in our respective disciplines and inform human life on this planet as a whole in a way to, that may be more sustainable, more holistic than what has gone on previously. This is why we organized this workshop. To paraphrase the conclusion of every scientific paper ever written, more work needs to be done. <laughs> Specifically on bringing diverse voices from diverse disciplines, from diverse backgrounds, into the same room together. To compare notes, to develop ideas, to explore directions, to chart a course on where do we go from here with a specific focus on methodology. How do we work with fungi? 
How do we come to understand them? How do, can we move towards developing knowledge with fungi that um, in ways that respond to their unique properties, characteristics, and affordances? To this end, for these two days, we have brought together a group of scholars from ecology, anthropology, design, conservation, and philosophy, as well as all of you here guests in the audience, both in the physical and the digital space. Um, we wish to build a multidisciplinary dialogue for sharing and further developing fungal research. To start us off, we ask the following questions of all of our speakers and all of you in the audience. How has interacting with mushrooms changed the way researchers think about their work or the values and objectives of their work? What, if anything, can fungi teach us about creating a healthier, more, sustain a more sustainable world? Conversely, what potential dangers may the mushroom hype pose? Can we do research not on, but with mushrooms? Can we learn from mushrooms, not just about mushrooms, what be, would be the value of such a shift? How do human fungi relations matter to different groups of people in different places? In what ways are fungi relevant to Finland, the Nordics, and the wider world? How does mushroom-oriented research and social activity link with climate change, biodiversity loss, environmental toxicity, and other challenges related to the anthropocene? Having explained our interest in fungi, why we're interested in doing this work and how we propose to go about it over the next few days. Let me address the final question. Why us? Why here? As Anna briefly in introduced, this workshop is rooted in and funded by the Biodiverse and Propocene Research Program here at the University of Oulu that seeks to bring together scholars from across social and natural sciences to collaboratively investigate biodiversity loss currently threatening multi-species well-being and planetary sustainability in order to generate future-oriented solutions. A workshop dedicated to fungal research then falls in line with this agenda, as multidisciplinary collaboration on fungal research is necessary to safeguard the well-being of a kingdom whose members play fundamental roles in soil health, decomposition, symbiotic connections, multi-species well-being, among many, many other roles. As such, this workshop is the brainchild of three people, Anna Krzybozinska, Agnese Bankowska, and myself, Anatoly Vinovsev. Anna, from, you heard, from whom you heard earlier, cannot help but love in mushrooms, as in Poland, mushrooming is pretty much obligatory and a national sport. In an academic context, she came to mushrooms through her interest in human-soil relations, fungi being the original soil makers. She is interested in what following mushrooms and their ways through hybrid research methods may teach us about the times, spaces, rhythms, materials, and practices of living well with complex ecologies, especially in relation to sustainable management of land. Agnesi has been mushrooming since her childhood roaming the forest in Latvia. During her PhD at the University of Helsinki, she became interested in the human-fungi relations in the context of food, paying attention to the value humans attribute to mushrooms in the context when they are considered edible. Agnesi has been involved in amateur mycology activities in Finland, closely following mushroom growing practices at homes and urban gardens. And I, myself, am an archaeologist, a mushroom archaeologist. <laughs> and if you'll allow me, it is on this point and my personal story that I would like to dwell a little bit longer in order to explain my personal relationship with fungi and my nascent research into them as a way to start addressing some of the questions I posed to you earlier. I do this with two stories that over time will merge into one related to the Lysinum uh, genus, Molites, popular edible mushroom species associated with poplars, birches, and other deciduous trees. The more recent story of how I got here begins with this. A brown cabbage bully I found in Simpson of Norway while conducting my PhD research 
or rather, at the time I was looking for fresh mushrooms to bring to dinner with a friend. And while under normal circumstances, I would have hit it with eagerness, the context of this encounter made me stop. You see, this was not a normal encounter with a mushroom in the woods. This mushroom was growing right in the middle of the foundations of a German World War II barracks from a time where this remote corner of Norway um, hosted up to 70,000 German troops. <clears throat> the occupation left a massive mark on the heritage of the city, one that took place in the mines and planted olive groves in the barracks. But it was at that moment that I started to understand that that recent heritage had a tremendous impact on fungal lives as well, and that those fungal species being decomposers, among many other things, are feeding off and transforming this dark past to create soils for the future of plants, humans, non-human animals, and other fungi. Yeah. What was going on there? What was this mushroom subsurface relationship to these ruins? I left that mushroom where I found it, not because I was worried about ingesting potentially harmful levels of toxic chemicals, which certainly should have been a consideration, but no, I, I left it more from the desire to see the fungus develop and grow unhindered as it was, in a sense, slowly dissolving the heritage of Nazi Germany. And in my professional opinion as a heritage, <laughs> we need fewer relics of white supremacy in the world. This was my segue into what I started to call mushroom archaeology, realizing from that one instant that, one, archaeology is not just about the past. A certain past play tangible, visible roles in the, in the present lives and ecologies. Two, archaeology should not be so set on preserving all pasts and that some pasts ought to be allowed to decay. And three, through that decay, new and hopefully better multi-species features will emerge. And through these realizations, I decided to reorient myself to pursue this research topic and look at human fungi relations within the recent ruins of the Anthropocene. Though it took me a few years before I met somebody who I thought it would be a good idea to spend money to send me crawling through crumbling 80, you know, 80 year old war detritus looking for mushrooms. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. <laughs> my second story behind my interest in mushrooms, including my knowledge regarding the edibility of bullets, goes back much further. I don't remember when I started picking mushrooms. But my grandmother has stories of me being able to navigate the forests since I was three years old. It is probable that my study of mushrooms began mm -hmm. then. Growing up as a Latvian of Russian-speaking ancestry between two deeply mycophile cultures, mushroom foraging was a fact of life. Mm -hmm. Spending my summers at my grandparents' summer house, we would constantly go on mushroom forays deep in the forests and I spent many mornings picking red cap bullets around the aspens near the garage. This activity inspired a lifelong love both for that place and the act of harvesting wild foods from the forest. I came back to my grandparents' summer house last month, 22 years after my grandparents sold it and moved away. I discovered that it was never reoccupied. I dedicated 17 years of my life to studying the remains of other people and other civilizations. And never in my life did I expect to come face to face with the ruins of my own life. With my great aunt's coat still hanging on the nail, with my, the piles of my grandfather's books smoldering on the floor, with the tattered remains of the bed I used to sleep in, with a long lost artifact, of my childhood. As I was exploring the ruins, my foot fell through the floor, the result of rodents digging under the floorboards and of fungal decay. 
every square meter of the property that did not have a building standing on it was turned to rapeseed cultivation or otherwise simply cleared out. I returned to the place where I picked bullets. The aspens were gone and so were the mushrooms, compounded both by the absence of their plant symbionts as well as the unseasonably dry early summer in Latvia. The former, in part a result of rural depopulation and outmigration that is particularly acute within the former Soviet Union, and the latter, in part, a result of climate change. What remains are memories and photographs that now seem too few in number, such as the life in the Anthropocene. As such, the more than human activity of fungi, plants, non-human animals that I found so inspirational in a Nazi ruin uh, in Kirkenes, in Latvia, came back to consume my own past, my own heritage, to consign the things I once loved to oblivion. This epiphany nuances the role of fungi, among other actors in the modern world. The mushroom hype, for all its promises, must be done with careful scholarship and critical reflection. Fungi may not always be the saviors of humanity's sins, and certain properties of fungi that make us excited and equally come back to haunt us. This was my personal story of how I got here, where I am now, why I care about mushrooms, and how I see fungal research contributing to my discipline. But what I find most exciting is that a lot of people have their own personal stories and personal connections to fungi. All of those stories and those connections have brought us here to this event and generated an absolutely astonishing amount of interest. After all, 224 people from around the world have registered in order to physically attend or digitally participate in a relatively small two-day workshop taking place in a relatively small city in North Central Finland. With such overwhelming interest, it is impossible to deny the world-making significance of kingdom fungi. The interest is there and it is growing. This move to incorporate fungi, bacteria, and other microscopic organisms into research and decision making practices has of late been referred to as the fungal turn, or the microbial turn, or ecology 2.0, underline the interconnectedness and the interdependencies of whole ecosystems, especially of those ecosystem members not seen by the naked eye and long neglected or stigmatized in the research. We, as the organizers, hope that the next two days will consolidate the groundwork that has already been laid out in fungal research and chart directions for further innovation, for public awareness, and for policy development. Thus, as we hear talks, full discussions, check out the amazing artwork, um, and go on tomorrow's fung uh, mushroom excursion, let us imagine what fungal research would look like in the future and work towards making fungi an inseparable part of our disciplines, of our policies, and of our imaginations in order to create a more sustainable world. It is imperative that we do this. It is urgent and it is inescapable. We need to account for fungi because, in the words of Giliana Furci and Marilyn Sheldrake in a recent op-ed piece in Time magazine, accounts of the living world that do not include fungi are accounts of the world that doesn't exist. Welcome everyone to the Mushroom Methods Workshop. Thank you.